got this nice 32 inch Sony Trinitron here. Let's observe the symptom. You know, as we've got blotches all over the screen, note that the channel indicator in the top of the screen, that normally is, should be green, but it's not. The color is horrendous on this set. I'm going to show you how to fix this problem. Now this set was given to me to take to recycling. The uh, person that owned it was told that the picture tube is gone, but that's not the case. I'll show you what goes wrong with these sets. It's a real simple fix. And when I'm done, this set's going to have a great picture. It's going to look as good as it did before it failed. So this set's a Sony KV32SXR10. And um, although the symptom does mimic that of a warped or damaged shadow mask or aperture grill, which certainly could happen if the set were to fall over onto its face, that's not the case with this one. And this is a five minute fix. It's going to take me longer to take the screws out and put the screws back in than it actually is to fix the television. Okay, the problem with this set, and when I turn it on, if you listen, you don't hear the telltale, or the telltale hum of the degaussing coil. What we're looking at here is we're looking at a failure of the automatic degaussing circuit. The degaussing circuit is down here on this board. I'll show you the circuitry. This component down here, this is the degaussing thermistor. This is the degaussing coil that plugs in right here that goes to the degaussing or demagnetizing coil that surrounds the picture tube. And what happens on these sets is the solder connections break on the bottom here and cause that to fail. So let's rip the board out and I'll turn the board up on end. We'll resolder that connection and that's going to fix the problem. And that'll make this TV look like a million bucks. Now to pull the chassis on this set, there are screws just on either side. It's always a good idea to remove the PC board from the neck of the tube just so that you don't stress it if any of the wires get pulled because it's really easy to break a tube on these. Trust me on that one. The shop I used to work at, the assistants broke a few. The boss broke a few too. Whenever the boss broke one, we got a good laugh. And you get this as the vacuum breaks. So we're gonna release the high voltage wire from its tie downs so that I can slide the board out. Just have to do it with the wire bundles here. Sony was pretty good. They left enough wire slack so that we could undo it for service. And there you can see the problem right there. Solder connection's broken right here. This is the thermistor. So we're just going to get the soldering iron warmed up and we're going to resolder that connection and that's going to fix this TV. So here we go. We'll resolder. Got my long cord iron here. We'll resolder the three terminals on the thermistor that are cracked. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to inspect the horizontal drive transformer connections because they were uh, problematic. What would happen is the connection would crack and you would lose horizontal drive, which would blow the output transistor. This is the horizontal drive transformer right down here. And looks like the connections are okay on it.
connections that are worth inspecting and resoldering if necessary is the vertical output IC right here. If you see any cracks around them, do resolder them too, otherwise you could have a vertical problem with it. Other than that, these TVs are actually quite reliable and uh, don't give a lot of problems. That's why these sets have lasted the amount of time that they have because they were well built. Okay, now we can slide the chassis back in. Just line up the chassis. And slide it back into place. Again, make sure that your CR2 socket is not getting hung up on anything that's going to put undue stress on the tube itself. Otherwise, you could have a shattering experience. The chassis will normally just slide right into place. And it's held in place by the two screws. The rig hope set's ready to go back together. Observe when I plug it in. You'll hear the distinctive sound. I've turned off the humming light, by the way. So, when I plug it in, you'll hear the distinctive sound of the degaussing circuit operating. That's the first clue. Listen. Hear the hum there? That was the degaussing circuit operating. And now when the picture comes on, it will be good. There we go. You notice how poor it looked before with all the color distortion? Now the picture's good. I'll just dial in some of my host channels here. I don't want to leave things running here because I don't want to... Uh... There, I can put that on as a commercial. I don't think i got to worry too much about uh, getting hit for copyright for a commercial. But as you can see, picture looks fantastic on this set again. And I think the speaker may be turned off if I had the speaker switch on this thing. Speakers. Is that speakers? Here we go. So that's it. That's how you fix a purity or degaussing problem on one of these Sony uh, Trinitron TVs. These TVs were fantastic. They would just go forever. And uh, there's not really much that needs to be adjusted on here. Maybe touch up the focus a little bit on here. But uh, other than that, there's not really a whole heck of a lot that needs to be done. And I'm not putting any timer effort into this set because this set is going to go up. It's going to go up on Craigslist. I'm going to give it the weekend for someone to take it off of my hands. If it doesn't come off of my hands, it's probably going to go into recycling, which is quite a shame because, uh, I mean, really, it does have a great picture. And for someone who's not interested in high definition or for video games, this set still has a lot of life left in it. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. I don't want to even know what this is. It's a promo, obviously, for a show. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.